Hi, third grade. We are here with a new shared read. This week's shared read is called Anansi Learns a Lesson. The genre of this story is folktale. A folktale is a story based off beliefs and traditions of a group of people or a region. It is passed down from generation to generation, and it often has a theme like helping others or kindness. It teaches a lesson or a moral. Folktales also usually have animal characters that act like humans. Let's take a listen to the summary of this folktale so that we can learn more about the story. Anansi learns a lesson. This story is a folktale. Anansi is a very selfish spider. Turtle asks him to share his bananas. Anansi tricks him and eats all the bananas. Turtle is angry. He and Fish play a trick on Anansi. They invite him to dinner, but they trick him so he can't eat any of their raspberries. Anansi aprende una lección. Este es un cuento folclórico. Anansi es una araña muy egoísta. La tortuga le pide que comparta con ella sus bananas. Anansi la engaña y se come todas las bananas. La tortuga se molesta. La tortuga y el pescado deciden darle una lección a Anansi. La invitan a cenar, pero le juegan una mala pasada para que no coma ninguna frambuesa. The summary taught me that this folktale is going to be about the two characters, Anansi the spider and the turtle, and it seems like they're playing tricks on each other. This sounds like it's going to be a really interesting folktale. I wonder what the moral or the lesson of the story is going to be about. Let's check out the essential question. The essential question says, What makes different animals unique? Read about how Turtle solves his problem. For this lesson, you will need your Reader's Writer's Companion book and a pencil. Just open up to page 36 and we'll get started. Pause the video if you need more time to get your materials, then press play when you're ready to start. Anansi the spider loved to play tricks on his friends. One afternoon, Turtle stopped by as Anansi was making lunch. I hate to bother you as you get ready to eat your meal, but those bananas look splendid, said the shy turtle. I am so hungry. Anansi was careful and kept a watchful eye on this food. He didn't want to share his lunch, so he decided to play a trick on Turtle. Please, help yourself, Anansi said with a sly and tricky grin as he offered Turtle some food. This folktale is off to an interesting start. Let's read some of our questions. The first question will focus on paragraphs one and two. One and two. This will focus on problem and solution. A solution is an answer to a problem. The question asks, what is Turtle's problem? Well, as we were reading, the first paragraph sort of introduces our two characters, Anansi and the turtle. And in the second paragraph, the turtle says how hungry he is. So at this point in the story, the problem is that the turtle is hungry. So let's write that on the line. Turtle is hungry. Now it wants us to underline the text evidence that helped us get this answer. And that would be this line of dialogue where the turtle says that he is so hungry. Go ahead and underline that sentence. The next question focuses on paragraph three. We're going to visualize. Remember, when you visualize, you can picture the story in your brain like a mind movie. It says, draw a box around words or phrases that help you visualize or picture what a Nazi is like. So 
I will look for words and phrases that tell me about Anansi's personality. In the third paragraph, I read, Anansi was careful and kept a watchful eye on this food. The words careful and kept a watchful eye on his food help me to picture that Anansi is staying very close to his food, like as if he's guarding it. He watches his food closely to make sure Turtle doesn't take any of it away. So I'm going to box in this first sentence in paragraph three. Go ahead and box that in too. Our next question focuses on paragraph four. This one's about synonyms. A synonym is a word that means the same thing or almost the same thing as another word. It says, circle a synonym for the word sly. Write what sly means here. Let's reread paragraph four to find that synonym for the word sly. Please help yourself, Anansi said with a sly and tricky grin as he offered Turtle some food. The author uses this word sly and then follows it up with this word tricky. The author is helping me to understand that sly and tricky mean almost the same thing. So I'm going to circle this word tricky. Now we have to write what sly means on the line. So the word sly could mean tricky, and it could also mean deceitful, like somebody isn't exactly telling the truth. They're saying some lies. So I'm going to add that as well. And deceitful. Go ahead and write these on the line. Let's turn the page and keep reading. Turtle reached for the food. Aren't you going to wash your hands first? Asked Anansi. Oh yes, Turtle said. When Turtle returned, Anansi had eaten half of the bananas. I didn't want the bananas to spoil, said Anansi. Turtle got closer and made another attempt to eat. Anansi stared at Turtle in disbelief. Turtle, please wash your hands again, he said. Turtle was upset and filled with dismay. He knew his hands were clean, but he went to wash them again. When he returned, Anansi had eaten all of the fruit. Ha ha, I tricked you, turtle, said Anansi. You didn't get any bananas. Well, Anansi doesn't seem to be a very nice spider, does he? Poor turtle, he was tricked into not getting any lunch. I wonder why Anansi didn't just say he didn't want to share his lunch. Why did he have to trick the turtle? Let's read some of our questions along the side. The first question is going to focus on paragraphs one through five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. The question will focus on visualizing. It says, underline text, that helps you to picture how Anansi keeps Turtle from eating the bananas. Let's reread these five paragraphs and underline as we go. Turtle reached for the food. Aren't you going to wash your hands first? Asked Anansi. Well, this sentence of dialogue should be underlined because this is the first way that Anansi is preventing the turtle from eating the bananas. He tells him to go wash his hands. Oh yes, said turtle. When turtle returned, Anansi had eaten half of the bananas. I'm also going to underline this part of the sentence that says Anansi had eaten half of the bananas. I can visualize in my head how Anansi must have been shoving those bananas in his mouth as fast as he could before Turtle could come back. I'm even picturing in my mind how there might be banana all over Anansi's face because he's just shoving the banana in as fast as he could. I didn't want the bananas to spoil, said Anansi. Turtle got closer and made another attempt to eat. 
Anansi stared at Turtle in disbelief. I'm going to underline this last sentence here because I can visualize in my brain how Anansi is just giving Turtle like the stink eye for trying to eat these bananas. He's in disbelief that, that he would touch those bananas yet. This stare, again, prevents Turtle from eating the bananas. Then it says, Turtle, please wash your hands again, he said. So I'm going to underline this sentence, too, because here again, the spider, Anansi, is saying and doing things to prevent Turtle from eating. He's directing Turtle to go wash his hands yet again. Let's move on to our next question. This question focuses on paragraphs six through seven. Six, seven. This one's about problem and solution. What is Turtle's problem? Let's reread. Turtle was upset and filled with dismay. He knew his hands were clean, but he went to wash them again. When he returned, Anansi had eaten all of the fruit. Ha ha! I tricked you, Turtle, said Anansi. You didn't get any bananas. So Turtle's problem is that he was tricked by Anansi and still didn't get anything to eat. Let's write that on the line. Turtle was tricked and didn't get anything to eat. Next, it says draw a box around text evidence that supports your answer. Our text evidence is this whole last paragraph on this page. It specifically says Ha ha, I tricked you, turtle. And then it explains that now he didn't get any bananas. So not only was he tricked, but he's still hungry. So let's box in this entire paragraph. The next question is about illustrations. So the pictures in the story. It says, Circle evidence in the illustration that helps you understand how Turtle feels. What part of this illustration can show you how Turtle feels? When I look at this illustration, I see Turtle's face and how sad it looks. He looks like he's almost about to cry with his eyes wide and his little hands in the water and he's trying to wash them. So you can circle his entire face. Go ahead, circle his face. All right, boys and girls, that is the first half of our shared read called Anansi Learns a Lesson. Based on this title, I have a pretty good feeling that Anansi is going to be learning a lesson that teaches him not to play tricks on people but we won't know until we finish reading the story. And in that case, I will see you guys back tomorrow with the second half of our story. Until then, bye for now.